Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to our event tonight. If you are here, you have found yourself at our Academic Connect for our School of Business and Management. And so if you are planning to major in anything from accounting to business management to maybe finance or even things that I have not listed right now, you have found yourself in the right spot. So I hope you're excited. As you can see, we have quite a few faces here with us today and we'll get to hear from them in a little bit. But before we get started, I do want to draw your attention to one thing. We do have a question and answer box that is located right at the bottom of your screen. And so if you have any questions that perhaps you've come in with already, or maybe you hear something and you realize that's really great. I like to hear more about that. Go ahead and drop your questions into that wonderful question and answer box. And we will be sure to answer those at the end of our time today, where we'll actually get to ask those questions of our, uh, of our panel today. So again, feel free to go ahead and use that question and answer box that we do have at the bottom. To go ahead and get us started today, I'm going to actually go ahead and hand things off to Katrina because she has a presentation prepared for us tonight. Awesome. Thank you. I am going to share my screen. Okay. Does that look good to everyone? Looks Perfect. great. Perfect. Hi, everyone. My name is Katrina Abbott. I am the Leong School of Accounting Program Coordinator. We are so excited that you are here and that you are interested in our School of Business um, and Management programs. We have a few faculty members with us today. We will be doing introductions after the presentation so you can get to know them and ask them questions about the program. So I'm gonna briefly uh, do a presentation that way we have enough uh, room for the end uh, for questions. So here we go. We are the School of Business and Management. Um, APU's promise to you is to cultivate difference makers and transform how we do business. We know there are so many business schools um, to choose from across the country, so we want to start by showing you why we believe APU is the best choice for you. Education to vocation, we are a Christ-centered university of scholars and our professors are driven, are missionally driven to help you find where God is calling you in the business world and beyond. All of our faculty are currently in the in or coming from the business industry and are here to help you discern your vocation. We have real world experiences and connections with business communities. So APU has an amazing business network. We host multiple career fairs, resume editing, a career development series, and we have many connections to local businesses where you will likely get practical experiences during your program. Just a few quick facts. We have about a thousand undergraduate business uh, students. Many of those students transition to our graduate programs that we have. So we have an MBA, an MBM, and a MAC program. We have, a notable, we have many notable accreditations, as you can read below. The School of Business has received national and international accreditations. When you attend APU, you are getting the cream of the crop with our faculty. 92% of them have terminal degrees and they are a blend of practical world experience and high scholarship. And here are a few of our programs. We have eight majors and six minors, starting with our Bachelor's of Science in Accounting, our Business Economics, business management, economics, entrepreneurship, finance, and international business, and marketing. All of these programs have a 39 core unit requirement aside from your general ed. So they are really specialized in focusing, uh, focused classes around the major of your choice. And I'm just gonna touch lightly on our scholarships. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm the, the program coordinator for the uh, School of Accounting. So with the School of Accounting, if you're interested in that program, you have an ability to earn one to $15,000 per academic year that is stackable if you maintain a 3.5 GPA. I can explain a little more about that later in the questions portion if you're interested. We also have um, scholarships available for our School of Business Management. Um, that are available and I can link that in the chat below um, after this presentation. Uh, these are a few of our minors. We have six minors, our economics, entrepreneurship, finance, business man or management, marketing, and accounting. 
you get to choose a major and minor to pair together to establish an area of expertise and a large field of knowledge in the industry. In our School of Business, we want you to know that you are not on your own. Our faculty and staff will help you craft a four-year plan where we, where we walk alongside you as you learn. We have advisors ready to connect with you so that you know exactly what you need for your majors and your minors. You don't have to start, you don't have to wait and to start taking business courses. They are integrated from the beginning of your freshman year. I just wanted to also touch on our study away program. Currently, we don't have this due to the COVID-19 restrictions, um, but hopefully we will be able to do this when it is safe to do so. These were um, our, this is our LAPU. This is when um, for our Europe study away program and our China program, our China study away program. Um, within this uh, program, they visited headquarters of leading um, industries and leading companies, um, which is a great advantage and hopefully we can do that soon. So um, I'm not gonna play this, uh, but you can check our YouTube channel out um, at the School of Business and Management uh, students at APU. And here's just a little list of our faculty. We have more on our website um, with our faculty and our adjuncts, um, but these are a few of our chairs so Dr. Helmste Dr. Roxanne Helm-Stevens is our interim dean and professor. Dr. Ronald Ron Ju, he is our associate dean. He is also on this call. Um, you'll get to meet him later. He is also a professor. Dr. Todd Pfeiffer, of, he is our chair of graduate programs and as well as a professor. Dr. Daniel Park, he is the chair of entrepreneurship, finance, and international business. So if you're a major in that, you'll probably be contacted um, be in contact with him. And Ken Kadarian is our Leung School of Accounting Chair, as well as Professor Dan Kipley. Dr. Dan Kipley is a Professor and Chair of Undergraduate Business, Management, and Marketing Entrepreneurship. And then, and here are a few of our internship opportunities um, that students have been connected with, as well as work for now. Um, KPMG, Nordstrom, Target, Kaiser Permanente. Um, we really encourage our students to be involved in student clubs. Um, this is a great way for you to meet, not only meet friends, but make professional networking connections. Um, so a few of the ones that I'll just highlight are our Accounting Honor Society, um, our Sigma Iota Epsilon, which is our management, our business management um, honor society, our Sigma Nu Tau, which is our Entrepreneurship Honor Society. Um, with all of these, you need a 3.2 GPA, as well as $125 application fee in order to enter. Um, but this is a great opportunity for you in the future, as well as for your future resumes. This is just, um, once you are part of our APU system, you will be uh, connected to an advisor. For undergraduate, you'll be connected to Kristen Hernandez. And for graduate, you'll be connected to Delaney Wood. And we just wanna thank you for um, joining us. We are so excited to talk with you after this um, and connect with you. If, we have, if you have any questions or we didn't answer any questions um, that you had during this, feel free to shoot um, myself or Chelsea an email at sbmstu at apu.edu and we'll get back to you within the week. And that is it for me. So I'll pass it back to Thomas. Wonderful, thank you, Katrina. Awesome, well, as she said, we do have some lovely faces here with us on our panel. And so I think some introductions are in order. And so as we begin and go into our question and answer time, be sure to keep those questions coming in the Q&A box. But I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Chelsea to start us off with introductions. Hi, good, uh, good evening, everybody. I'm so excited to meet everyone. Um, my name is Chelsea Harris. I am the program coordinator for the School of Business and Management. Um, and I basically, I provide su support to all School of Business and Management programs. Um, I am such a huge advocate of our School of Business and Management. Um, I'm an alumni of the school. I, I've actually gotten, um, 
I participated in the ma master's in management program back in 2011. And I'll definitely say it was it's, attending APU has really just helped me understand how I can take this Christ Center curriculum and connect it with real, real world business applications. So um, I definitely would suggest anybody who's interested in, in, in this particular, uh, any of these programs, definitely take, really take an interesting look at it because it's really, uh, really has excelled my career um, within business. So that's it for me. Hi everyone, again, my name is Katrina Abbott. I'm the Leong School of Accounting uh, Program Coordinator. So I will be able to assist you with anything from scholarships, advisement. Um, we host uh, our Meet the Firms event at the end of this, um, during our fall semester, um, which is a great opportunity for accounting students to really connect with firms. Um, we are here to support you and we Hope that we can have you as part of our APU um, team. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Mark Common and I am a, a professor in the School of Business Management. I teach international business and strategic management as well as um, organizational performance or quality management. And a couple of things I think that um, you know are interesting is, is I've been here for uh, two semesters now, so I'm a fairly new hire for APU. Uh, but what that means is a couple things. One is, and this I'm going to actually say this, but I actually reflect a lot of faculty with this. Um, you know, some places you go for an education, but your faculty has just really been always in academia. Uh, but a lot of our faculty comes with industry experience, and that in the School of Business and Management. So we've seen both sides of the um, of the coin. So we actually have been in a lot of maybe the industries that you're being prepared uh, to go into. Uh, I came out of 26 years in aerospace and automotive industries. So, you know, that's a, a background that some of us do bring. Uh, the other thing that I think is interesting is, is that I made, you know, when I was doing that uh, job search and, and looking at and so forth and why APU. And I think that that's another interesting thing is, is not only are we a faith-based institution with a high academic standard as uh, Katrina was going through, but you know, I think that a lot of places, maybe that faith-based piece comes through as something where there's a lot of thou shalt nots um, in some faith, but the reality of it is, is it's when we're teaching you, uh, you know, faith integrated uh, business and management, we're actually teaching you how to. Um, and so it's not just that thou shalt not, but it's really the fact of, you know, how do you necessarily reconcile your particular faith with dilemmas that you meet? Um, and how do you work through those and giving you the tools and equipping you to do that? And I found that that just really is exciting here at APU is getting into the discipline and figuring out how to, um, how to take that you know, our, where, where we come from, our own faith, our own uh, position, and whatever that faith is, whatever your uh, belief system is, how do we use and that to basically speak into business and be excellent role models in and as we're excellent in our discipline. So that is certainly something we want to hope to bring. So I hope that uh, that is something that excites you as well. Good evening, everyone. My name is Melissa Langerveld, and I'm here to offer more of the student perspective of things. I got my undergrad in Bachelor of Science in Accounting, and I graduated May 2020 with that. And then I went straight into the grad program, the Master of Professional Accountancy. So that's currently the program I'm in right now. Um, so I can definitely answer any questions if you're more wanting to look at what student life is like and what my experience was in a wider range of classes. Hey students, uh, I'm Dr. Ju, I'm Associate Dean here in the School of Business, and we're so excited that you joined us tonight. And we are hoping that you're gonna find that APU, particularly the School of Business, is really the place for you to grow academically, to grow spiritually, and to make lifelong friends and connections. I've been in the school 20 years. Fun fact, three of my kids graduated as marketing majors and they have jobs. So um, we think that uh, School of Business is a special place and we want to see you here uh, next semester. 
Hey everyone, uh, I'm Professor Stephanie Jeter and I'm a faculty member here teaching accounting, finance and auditing. And I get exposure to a lot of different majors. So I get exposure to the business management majors, marketing, entrepreneurship, because of uh, the classes I teach there. Uh, they, you might have it the first semester or the second semester uh, once you get into your business courses. So I get ex exposure to lots of different students. Uh, I've been at APU for about six years now. I came from the University of Cincinnati, but as Dr. Common said earlier, I was also a practitioner uh, in, um, uh, in business. And just a fun fact, I'm also a uh, former student athlete, so I can speak to some of those uh, things as well. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Dr. Todd Pfeiffer. I am a faculty member in the School of Business and Management. I'm also the chair of the graduate programs. I oversee the MBA and MBM programs. And I can honestly tell you, I love my job. And I know you might think you're supposed to say that, but in reality, there's lots of people that don't love their jobs out there, but I do. I love what I do, but I love the people that I work with and I love the atmosphere. And APU is a great place to be as a faculty member, as a staff member, and as a student. And part of the reason I love my job is I love the field of business. And so often when people think of business, they may think of you know, a corporation, they might think of an entrepreneurial venture, a small business, that sort of thing. But one of the reasons I love business so much is that it has so much application throughout industries all over society, nonprofits, churches, government, you name it. The things that we teach in this program, leadership, management, finance, accounting, marketing, legal issues, all organizations deal with these different factors. And so it's, it's really cool to see the different types of people that come together and the ideas that are exchanged. And college is a great opportunity to explore. And we love to facilitate those conversations of exploration. So we're glad you're thinking about us. We'd love to have you come and just good to talk to you. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for those lovely introductions. Again, especially now that we're a bit more acquainted with who we have in our presence today, keep those questions coming. I'm sure that there's a lot of things that you may be wondering about. This is the perfect space for that. And so to kick things off, we do have some questions ready to go. And so for this first question, Melissa, I think I'm going to hand this one off to you. Uh, somebody in our audience is asking, if I am undecided on what major to pick, what courses would I start with? Yes, so that was the boat I was on when I entered APU. I knew that that was the school I wanted to go to, but I had no idea what major. And what I did is I actually entered the School of Business because I knew that was a great route. There's tons of ways you could go with it. So when you take your core classes, which every business student does take, you'll take like marketing, economics, finance, you'll get all of those intro classes along with whatever you're majoring in. So I just began with those and kind of like, you know, trial and error. I took those classes, saw what I enjoyed, saw what was a good fit. And then sophomore year being in principles of accounting, that was when I knew that that was the major for me and that was the career I was meant to go into. And so that's the great thing about the School of Business is that you can start out with those. You don't have to declare right away and really test it out and see what's the best fit for you. Wonderful. Thank you for that. And then I think getting another perspective on that too, Dr. G, I, I, I want to ask you the same question. As somebody who kind of knows the holistics of the School of Business and Management, let's say I was a business student, but wasn't exactly sure which of the many programs we offer would be best for me. Uh, what would you say? What would be the first step that I should take? Well, Thomas, a great question. And uh, what Melissa shared is uh, quite accurate. Uh, all of our business majors take the same common starting courses. So you could actually wait until your sophomore year to declare a specific major and not lose any ground at all. And one of the great things is you get exposure to a variety of disciplines and you'll have the opportunity to talk to professors that are actually teaching in these disciplines and ask them about careers and internships and uh, grad school and other kinds of things. Our professors love to help students. They are interested in your success and they will spend time with you individually to figure out what's best for you and the path that God 
uh, would have you um, uh, go on to achieve the successes that he has destined for each of you. So um, no worries. Uh, you can figure it out in that first year or two. And there are plenty of people around you to help. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Moving on, we're getting some more questions coming in. So wonderful. I, this looks like it's actually another question that would be good for Melissa. And so Melissa, we have somebody asking, uh, what made you choose APU over other colleges that you got into? Yes, so I'm from Washington State originally. So I actually wasn't aware of APU until my brother got recruited to play basketball and decided um, to go to school there. And so it was through just visiting the campus that I fell in love with it. I actually went and like sat in on some of his classes as a high schooler, which was really fun. Um, certain professors will allow visitors. So early on, I got to see what it was like there and how much the professors and the students connect. You're not in a big lecture hall. It's going to be more of that smaller class size. And so with that, just the student professor connection was amazing. And I knew it was something I want to be a part of. Um, also, the um, faith-based thing was very important for me. I was struggling at that time and I wanted to grow in it. And so being able to take classes that also reinforce my faith and just allowed me to explore that in general was another big factor in me um, going to school there. And it just felt like home visiting campus and it's felt that way ever since. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. It looks like we actually have a question about grad schools. And so Todd, I think this is up your alley. And so the question is, if I apply to grad school at APU, uh, does it help my chances of getting in if I graduated from APU? So chances of admission, I, I think is it's, it's sort of a complicated question, but I, essentially there are admissions requirements for the grad program, just like there are admissions requirements uh, for the undergrad program. And we have students that come to us who graduate from APU. We have students that come to us that graduate from other schools. Um, in terms of helping chances, I, I think I'd focus more on uh, the relationships that you may have built with professors throughout your time as an undergrad. Um, th that's sort of a opportunity for a continuation. And so um, I, I think that's maybe more of the focus to sort of say, I'd love to be in the same place for quite a while where I can sort of work through that whole progression of you know, a bachelor's degree and a graduate degree. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah. And you know what? I think I can even piggyback off of that myself. And so like Melissa, uh, I was actually a, an undergraduate student at APU and I, I took some time away, but now I'm back on staff as an admissions counselor and I too am actually getting a master's degree here. And so kind of like we've been talking about during this conversation, yeah, I totally agree. Kind of having that continuation of what you started before, it, it's a really cool thing. It, to me, it's, it's almost like coming back home, really what it's it, like. And so, it, Thomas, yes. Just to add to that, one of the great things about being um, at APU uh, is that you can start taking grad courses in your senior year. So you can get a head start on your master's. So if you're already doing an undergrad in School of Business, you can start taking grad courses in your senior year and get out even earlier. Wow. And just, just to add to that too, um, is that when you do take classes as um, an undergraduate, you can take them for the price of as an undergraduate. Um, so that is an advantage too, so. Wow, I feel like I'm learning so much. I didn't actually know that. And I think too, Thomas, from a faculty perspective, um, like Todd said, or excuse me, like Dr. Pfeiffer said, you get to, when you, when you understand more about how the faculty, the faculty style, the professor's, you know, way of uh, handling the course, you get a rhythm. So I think, you know, I have two students right now that are in my uh, master's of accounting course and accounting information systems. They're also in my undergraduate audit course. But I think they, they felt like coming over because they already knew uh, something about the way I teach and they, they, had, they, they already had an understanding of how uh, some of us work as professors. And so they, they took that opportunity to leverage, to leverage the relationships as Dr. Pfeiffer said, 
and uh, leverage the opportunity that Dr. Ju and, and uh, Katrina said as well. Wonderful. All right. Well, and then before maybe we... Melissa, you can share too. Like Melissa is actually, um, she, some of the master students and like the way my course runs, uh, people can get trained by the upper level. So Melissa, maybe you can share that, how even though it's some undergrads in there with the maybe grads, the graduate students kind of do some training. Yeah, uh, and I took that route of, I knocked three courses out of the way during my undergrad. So when it comes to my load now, it's just that much lighter and it financially, you know, it was a huge help. And so that route is definitely something I suggest. And yeah, to that, like when I was an undergrad going into those grad classes, I felt intimidated but everyone was like very welcoming, very ready to fill you in. Like if there was something, you know, you didn't have the basis of yet. Um, and so I think it just shows students are willing to like help one another. And now I get to be that role of helping the undergraduate and getting them ready for that um, master's of professional accountancy. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Awesome. Well, Thank you for all that. I feel like I was learning all of that myself. It almost makes me want to apply for the business school myself. And so, great, we'll keep going. It looks like those questions are coming in hot. So everyone that's sending those in, keep doing it. This is a whole bunch of good stuff that we have coming our way. And so the next question, I think we will gear this towards Katrina and Chelsea. It seems like it's a program question. And so the student says this, I am, thinking of getting a degree in animation and visual effects, but I'm also thinking about adding a business minor. Uh, do you see this often? And if so, what kind of minor within the business school would you suggest to go with this type of major? Yeah, I, uh, oh. go ahead, Katrina, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. sorry. <laughs> All I was, I was gonna say is um, one thing to, to really consider as, as a, a biz, if you decide you want to go with a business minor, business is all around us, right? It's in it's in everything we do. It's in every company. Every company needs business, right? So I feel like even as a, so I'll, I'll talk about myself. In my undergraduate programs, I was, um, at first, I was a music major, business minor. Um, and, and with that being said, with animation being more of a, um, more of a creative type of uh, program, um, I went more towards like a marketing, um, marketing and management um, emphasis with my business minor. Um, and that was that was really helpful for me. Um, so I think that might that might fit well with a creative type of industry because your animation, um, you could be you could do animation and, and for a, for a marketing program, you can get into a job where you're doing that. So I think that would be a, a great pair. I'm sorry, Katrina, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you earlier. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I feel like you answered the question. So I was just staying quiet. That was that was awesome. I think that's great. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, thank you for that. Next question we have. Uh, this is about international business. And so correct me if I'm wrong. Stephanie, were you, would you be the one to answer this if it's about international business? No, I have to give all the honor to Dr. Common. All right, Dr. Common. Well, this one's coming in hot for you. So the question is, what does the field of international business consist of apart from business administration or business management? And as a follow up question, if the international business major is considered, uh, essentially, would you also learn things about business administration and business management within that major? Yeah, so um, I'll start with actually just even some of the, you know, I, with the field question. And really, when it comes to the discipline of international business, you know, I'll, I'll just even give you, I told you I came from industry and just even giving you that perspective. So we are such a globalized world today. We are so interconnected. Um, and so any little tiny thing in business, you'll find very quickly, it has a lot of international um, tentacles really to it. So you know, early in my career, um, I never anticipated being in international business. And I think literally like six months into my job, I ended up, uh, you know, with 30 trips into, into Mexico, working on a greenfield opportunity down there. And then through my aerospace industry, of course, I ended up uh, with a lot of time through Europe and Asia, uh, managing supply bases and so forth in those areas. So it isn't necessarily the fact that you pick international business. I think international business finds you when you're in management period. 
um, just because of how integrated and globalized our world is today. So I would say that, you know, one of the things that um, that with all that said, though, one of the things I like about the international business, um, you know, discipline is, is the fact that it really prepares you to look at a larger, you know, uh, differences in culture, a lot of differences in trade, a lot of differences in, um, you know, maybe a, a more, you know, fractured um, and networked, if you would, um, you know, pr production and supply chain and so forth. So as you think about through those things, uh, you learn to basically work with that. You can totally apply that again domestically, but, you know, you can find jobs that are very much in, you know, supply chain and logistics, uh, international marketing, uh, marketing and supply chain particularly have a lot of international flavor and a lot of international opportunities. Um, but even within that, like I said, you, you'll end up in international business quite often anyway. So we prepare in international business, we prepare you to deal with a lot of different things that you might never deal with in a domestic environment. Um, you might, you know, in, in my 26 years in industry, I can't say that I was domestically ever offered a bribe. Um, but I've, you know, in international business, I've faced many uh, ethical dilemmas, things that basically we have to work through. And that's where I come from that position of, you know, rather than just telling you don't do these things, uh, how do you basically go about and execute business with excellence and come from your faith based perspective. And so that is something that we really enjoy uh, working through. Um, and it, it doesn't all come from your professor. It comes from a lot of really good conversations, even in the class. So that's that's part of it. Uh, I think the second piece of that question really had to do with. Um, repeat the second piece, please, for me. Yes, let's take a look here. So. Yes, will, will, will there be elements of business administration and business management that I would learn if I were to study international business? Yes, so one of the things, you know, when you're studying there, uh, we teach a lot of, you know, global production, supply chain. We teach a lot of, you know, international finance. We teach a lot of uh, international business administration. And the other thing that I think that you, you know, really we focus on a lot is uh, strategy because uh, strategic management at home is complex enough. Uh, when you basically put that into a global perspective and you add in a lot of uh, different external environments and different legal systems and political systems and trade barriers and all those kinds of things, uh, it becomes even more necessary to, to have a good business strategy and a good business plan. So um, the short answer is, is we, we put a lot of that into it, yes. Wonderful, love it. Cool. Well, it looks to me like Professor Anderson has joined our conversation. Yes. Uh, Professor, Professor Anderson, we got to do a couple introductions earlier. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do with the School of Business and Management, and perhaps any specific areas of expertise that you may have? Um, let's see. I've been here about uh, 16 years now, and I teach uh, mainly just the accounting courses, 120 and 121, and sometimes uh, intermediate and cost. And uh, I work with the Accounting Honor Society. And uh, I don't know if there's any particular expertise I bring other than I really, I, I try to make all the topics as understandable as possible because they get kind of complex along the way. So I try to break them down into smaller pieces and then build them up from there. So. Wonderful, thank you. All right, cool. For this next question, let's go ahead and go to uh, Stephanie and Paul. Actually, if you guys want to answer this next question, I think this would be great. And this is, how do you incorporate elements of faith within the classroom? Steph, you want to go first on that? Okay. Um, well, <laughs> first, I have to say that uh, keep it real. Keep it real. Just like Dr. Common said, we don't live in a world that's like, oh, hallelujah, no temptation. Satan is real and, and impacts us. So first of all, in the classroom, we keep it real. Now, every professor, professor is going to have their own style of keeping it real. OK, students. So just but but everybody's going to keep it real with you. So you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, I made a mistake. We we deal with how do you how do you work through those mistakes? How do you how do you work through uh, these different temptations? So um, we keep it real. 
The other thing is um, we make it very applicable to business. So as Dr. Common said earlier, we, we actually take the subject matter and go through scenarios of what these issues might look like and then see what the scriptures have to say about it. So for example, in my course, I use the three C's and uh, Professor Anderson will share more on this as well. We look at conviction, character, and competence. So those are the three C's that I tend to focus on in my courses. Uh, do you have, we help you build the conviction. That's Ephesians uh, 6, 10 through 18. And then uh, we, work, we work on uh, your character, which is Daniel 6, 4, about no negligence, no corruption. And uh, then we focus on, you know, the competence. And the competence is all the subject matter. And all the, uh, like we use a uh, management accountants guide for, and, and I use that in my finance courses as well. So there are lots of practical guides we can use too to keep us credible. Um, well, let's see. For, for me, I, I really emphasize to the students that you know, you know, if we're going to be followers of Christ, that we're supposed to be on duty twenty four seven. And so you can't just you know have your character be one way at church and a different way you know out on the football field and a different way at work. But I try to emphasize that in work, they have two great opportunities to live their faith. Number one is how do you treat everybody around you in that environment, in that company, its customers, its suppliers, the, the, the local community, et cetera, et cetera. How do you carry your character into that setting? And number two, the great opportunity to um, leverage the great economic wealth that so many companies generate in the community outreach, many of the, of, of the companies, not necessarily for faith reasons, more for you know uh, political reasons and, and how the public sees them, but there's a lot of corporate uh, social responsibility emphasis these days. And you can become a part of that, or if there's not some kind of program like that at the, the company that you work, you can become involved in that. And I show all kinds of videos from companies and their outreach programs. To emphasize that you know you really can be involved in, and get, have a much greater influence than you ever thought, given the economic leverage a lot of these companies uh, present. Wonderful, thank you. All right, Katrina, I think I'm going to send this next question to you. This question is, and it's it's something you touched on a little bit in your presentation, but perhaps we can elaborate a bit on it. But what types of internships are available for business majors? Yeah, so um, we host a career fair as well as a meet the firms um, fair at the end of the year. We're also hosting one in April. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to connect with um, corporations or companies that you're interested face to face or virtually face to face. Um, this really gets you in touch with um, this provides opportunities for internships or even jobs. Um, I can I kind of want Melissa to talk about this too, um, because she um, got a position from one of our Meet the Firms uh, fairs as well. So I'll just pass that to Melissa also, just for a testimonial of it. Yes, so the Meet the Firms is basically like an accounting specific career fair. Um, so it's a great chance if you're going into that field to get an internship, but then can leads to a job. And starting off like freshmen even go to it, even if you're right away not trying to secure like employment because it really helps you just network. That's a huge thing in business, no matter what you're doing, learning how to like talk to employers to interview. And so all those are great opportunities, just build that initially. And then when it comes to your junior, senior year, um, you go around, you hand out your resume, you speak with employers. I was able to secure an internship at Cape and Krause um, and get a job offer. Um, and then also I ha actually had a different internship trying to just kind of be well-rounded and see what there is an internal audit um, in Houston. And I start in June full-time. So those opportunities are, yeah, it's exciting. These opportunities are provided to you through the school, through networking, through connections. And so definitely accounting and whatever major you're doing, APU provides those career fairs. And if you take advantage of it, you can meet people and find the place that you're meant to work. 
Hey, if I can add to the internship conversation, uh, it's great uh, that our almost all of our county students have internships and almost all of them graduate with jobs. Uh, but if you're not an accounting major, uh, we've had interns that go to JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and they end up working for uh, the people that put the Mars rover uh, up in Mars. Uh, we've had Nordstrom interns that end up working in Seattle at Nordstrom headquarters. We had some NBC Universal interns that are currently producing TV shows right now. Uh, the, their internship led to a full-time job. We've had Disney interns that are currently working for Disney and ABC and ESPN. So uh, there are a variety of opportunities out there and it doesn't matter if it's a major or a minor because one of the questions was, well, if I just do a business minor, can I still uh, do an internship? Yes, you can. Uh, as soon as we hear about internships, we try to make that information available uh, to as many people as possible. And a number of our students have taken advantage of these internships at major companies and are now working for them as employees, managers, and executives. Wonderful, thank you. Follow-up question to this, Katrina, and perhaps Chelsea, you could speak to this as well, but are there actually any internship opportunities for business minors? And if so, what, what would that look like? I think uh, Dr. Ju just touched on that actually. Um, he, it doesn't really matter if you are my minor or a major, if we have an internship opportunity, we send them out uh, via email through and through our newsletter, we have a job posting um, where we list our internships um, and then we will directly email them to students um, depending on how fast uh, the internship needs to be filled. Perfect. Okay, great. Tom, it's just uh, one thing to add on that. Students, I think it's very important. Like we provide so many resources uh, different job posting platforms, newsletters. It's like almost so much information. What I think you have to focus on students is uh, being ready. So like have your resume. Don't wait until, you know, like your junior year to start working on that. Go ahead and meet with our Center for Career and Calling personnel. Like go ahead, take all that energy you got right now. I mean, you the first day you get onto the campus, just go ahead and use the resources. Start talking to the professors, asking how they, you know, why they chose their job or whatever. It's your, you, you've got to take hold of this and say, I put my money in this and I'm going to get every dollar I can out of it. I'm going to meet with everybody. I'm getting this resume together and just get excited about that and take advantage of all the resources. And Which, I just want to add to that real quickly. In my marketing class, intro to marketing, again, you'll take all those core classes. That was actually something we did. My professor, Rachel Bodell, had us do a project called Marketing You, and you completed your resume, and you did a LinkedIn profile. You created, like, letters and things you want to send out to employers, and then when it came time to actually get employment, I was able to use that and just, you know, update the job but I was ready and to actually go out and like secure a job just from that one course and that one project. So there is classes and they really do equip you um, to get a job. Yeah, yeah, and there's nothing to say that you couldn't have an internship after your freshman year, your sophomore year, and even your junior year and kind of study the field that's out there. That, those are the, the best ways to get a job in any field is to actually have, you know, worked for a company and now they know you and you're both a known quantity. So more the better, the earlier, the better. Stephanie's point is well taken. Get started from the get-go. Wonderful. Okay, great. Well, this next Thomas, question is- I know, I know we don't want to rub this in, but it, it's so good. The other thing, students, do not belittle your student campus work experience. I mean, blow that up. Like if, if you're working in uh, sanitation, don't get somebody to help you not say sanitation on the resume. Listen, you are accountable for health and safety. That is important to me, health and safety, especially right now. So please take every experience and, and know that it is essential. It is not just some little job you're working. It is actually 
uh, meaningful and, and, and be proud of that and, and get somebody to help you on the translation of how to use the words, but do not belittle it. Don't just say, oh, I was a cashier. No, no, honey, you were managing the store's inventory. You were uh, preventing theft. You were, you were doing something that was major for that company. Well, and that you were doing something outside of just going through the motions of, of, of the undergrad life, you reaching out and doing things that, you know, that's, that's key too. Perfect. Wow. Such great input. I just feel like as soon as I feel like I've gotten everything I need to know, like somebody jumps in with something even better. This is, this is going really well. <laughs> great. Well, let's keep our conversation going. And so... For this next question, I'm thinking, let's get some input from both undergrad and graduate. And so I think I'm going to direct this towards uh, Dr. Ju. And then Todd, if you want to speak to uh, graduate studies on, as, on this particular question. Uh, but what is your alumni network like? Are many alumni still close to, by to APU? What kind of places do they end up going to after graduating with their degrees? That's a great question. Uh, I think one My apologies for the internet issues that I'm having is about uh, the APU community is everyone pretty much stays in contact with each other after they leave a APU. Uh, and that informal network really connects our graduates uh, with the non uh, in their careers. And of course we recommend Handshake platform, LinkedIn platform, other social media platforms to connect people. Uh, we have uh, alumni leadership on campus that tries to keep everyone connected. Uh, but a lot of the connection between our alumni are uh, or rather informal connections. Uh, and uh, our graduates continue to help their fellow students know about opportunities and, and help provide peer guidance uh, for graduate school and uh, for other kinds of issues after graduation. Uh, but we have great alumni uh, and we hear from them all the time about the success that they're having in the workplace and about future opportunities for uh, our graduates. Yeah, I would, I would give a similar answer to Dr. Ju about that. Our, our graduates are literally all over the world. And it's really, we get, a, we get alumni newsletters and it, it, it's always, they're always fun to read because you go, wow, people are doing some really, really cool stuff. And, and I, could, I could sort of uh, expand on what Professor Jeter was talking about in terms of your on-campus experience. If you think about um, you know, your, your classroom experience, this is your network. And, and I know even for myself, I still connect with uh, former classmates, undergraduate, you know, multiple graduate programs. And, and really in a lot of ways, I connect with them because I built personal relationships with them, but also because I knew what they were studying. I knew how hard some of them worked. I knew how serious some of them were. I don't contact all of them, but I contact a lot of people because I say, hey, I know you were really dedicated when you were in school. I know that you work for this industry. I think one thing that's interesting about the graduate program is, and, and we would love it if you came here as an undergrad and went straight into the grad program, but we do have a number of students who come to us with work experience who are working now. And so they're balancing jobs and families and going to graduate school. And that is a wonderful resource because those people are in the industry right now. They're looking to, expand their skills, uh, expand their ability to sort of move up in companies, you know, uh, potentially look at different ventures, just trying to uh, just kind of really develop their effectiveness as professionals. And so when you're meeting people in class, sometimes in the graduate program, you're meeting people that work now in companies all over the place. And you know, this is again one of those things we could we could talk about. You know, back in the day when some of us went to school versus today. The cool thing about uh, today's uh, higher education landscape is that due to technology, 
you can literally connect with people all around the world. Dr. Common was talking about the fact that we are a global community. It's very true. And you can build these relationships with people who are presently all over the globe. And that's, that's pretty exciting. And I'll, I'll just share this quick thing for you. I, I had a student uh, in the fall who was taking a class with me online. It was, it was a Zoom class and he was actually in Croatia and I communicated beforehand with him and I said, hey, uh, you know, this is, this is actually a scheduled class, right? It's gonna be 6 p.m. Pacific time. And he said, yeah, I know, but I love the program and I wanna take the class and I wanna take class with you, so I'll get up. So he got up at three o'clock in the morning and he was on Zoom with us and we had some great conversations and it was great to talk to him about what was going on in Croatia and explore that realm of things. And so that network is something that you build while you're in school, but will continue to utilize far into the future. Hey everyone, make sure you check out the link that Melissa put in the chat because APU is uh, highly ranked when it comes to alumni networks. Yeah, and you know, speaking from somebody who spent a lot of time in industry and you know, interviewing and hiring um, a lot of staff, you know, that were coming out with degrees and so forth. One of the things that I will say is, you know, some people maybe question, um, you know, that the school that you, the name brand recognition, uh, whether they're faith based, all of these kinds of things. There's so many different things that university or uh, employers look at. And one of the things that, you know, when you really start to get into the industry and establish kind of this network, people have a, a very high respect for APU. And part of it is, is because of the fact that our students have come out with some of that preparation we did talk about. Um, you know, you're not necessarily leading the news in ethics situations uh, with big breaches or anything else, because we've prepared uh, the students for understanding how to, uh, to work with situations. And we've brought those eventualities up and we've talked through those. Um, so it's not the first time a student has encountered that decision. Um, whereas maybe in some uh, schools you would actually, it might be the first time you've encountered the decision and you know, you're having to kind of wing it alone, but we've talked through a lot of those scenarios and worked through those. Um, so it doesn't, you know, it's, it's not something where you have, um, I went to a Christian school. That's never anything you have to apologize for. Employers value a lot of the traditions and the ethics and the foundational qualities um, that you that are you know our, our nation was founded on that really come into play and, and come from a root in Christian values. Um, and then the other piece of it is is you know with I think um, some of the just schools around, one of the things I will say is, is, you know, we rank very highly in a number of different things. I know we have uh, Latina, Latino, Latinx uh, uh, actually um, recognition as being a, a school in that, you know, that is, um, is um, diverse in that respect and so forth and so on. But, you know, we're distinctly Christian, definitely but we are also distinctly excellent as a private school and try to get you a very, uh, an excellent education. And then we are also distinctly trying to be your university of choice um, and be inclusive um, and have those conversations around, um, you know, equity and really mutual respect. And so I think that with everything that you get prepared for, uh, we definitely prepare you that uh, for as an individual that employers will love. And if I could add one more piece to that, um, I'll, I'll tell you a quick little secret, which is not really a secret, is that most organizations don't love to spend a lot of time searching for and interviewing prospective employees because it's a time consuming process. You got to read a lot of resumes. And so organizations say, hey, if I can if I can cut down the time and energy I have to put into this process, I'll do it. And in order to do that, sometimes what you do is you go with places you trust. So when you build a reputation in a community and someone says, oh, uh, we have other people that I know that either went there or worked there, people are going to, they're, they're still going to, you still got to win the job. I'm not going to promise you that if you go to AP, you can just walk in and just get any job you want. But it certainly is a big piece of the puzzle when it comes to establishing a level of integrity. because more than anything, 
we seek to be, and I, you know, Professor Chief talked about keeping it real. We are, okay. And Dr. Common said, it, "Don't be a, don't you know, don't be ashamed of your faith." It's it's an interesting challenge sometimes to be in the marketplace as a Christian, but it's also a really exciting opportunity to live out your faith in whatever industry that you're getting into. Wonderful. Again, the good responses just keep building upon each other. I feel like we've got a really, <laughs> a really collaborative group, whether we planned it or not. So thank you all for those really, really insightful responses to the questions. And with that, we are about five minutes out. So I think this will actually be our final question for the night. And so we usually like to close out our events with this particular question. And so we just want to close with this. What is one of, if not maybe the biggest piece of advice that you can give to our students now who are looking into many schools, probably contemplating a lot of decisions and really just sitting on some really big things. And so I'm thinking, let's, let's hear from three of us who are on our panel today. And Melissa, perhaps you specifically as a student right now could speak to this, but if we could get Melissa, maybe two other people on our panel today that just want to tackle that question of what is a really, really big piece of advice that you would have found very helpful in the situation that our students are in tonight. Yeah, I can start off. I just think APU is a great choice for a ton of reasons, but one thing alone I can point to is that your professors are champions for you and they really do care about you. And in the School of Business, it's awesome because that translates into them actively trying to help you find employment, you know, sending you internships they think is a good fit for you, um, finding out who's hiring, and then like later on, you know, checking in like they were saying earlier, you alumni keep in contact with the professors because they truly do care about your success, placing you in a job, and you're not going to get lost in a lecture hall of like 300, 400 people, but you're in a classroom where you're face to face with your professor, you're able to go after class, ask them questions, they have office hours, they're more than happy to answer questions and go above and beyond. And so I think that would is what distinguishes APU and then the School of Business in general is that they really will just help you succeed going out into the workforce. Yeah, I mean, building on that just a little bit, I mean, you're not working with some, um, you know, research individual who is up there lecturing without a lot of practical experience and then leaves the room and a teacher's assistant is basically working with you. That is not the experience that you will have at APU. Um, so really, you have people are, who are, you know, research excellent, but they're also academically uh, practiced and or I mean, research industry practiced, really. Um, and so they're meeting you with that real experience. Um, and you were working with you, you heard 92% with terminal degrees. So the highest degree you can get in that field. Um, and so you're working with those individuals on a regular basis and you know with a with a direct conduit to that experience and guidance and um, i think that's a, a big point well in all the surveys i've ever seen about how students perceive you know their college experience especially in the classroom is the number one thing is the professor cares about us you know, and you will definitely find that here across the board is that we care. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, just want to say again, thank you to all of you who were on our panel today. It was a pleasure being able to speak with all of you and just learn a little bit about the School of Business and Management. And for those of you who are tuning in from wherever you may be, I hope that this was a just a really insightful experience for you to learn more about what this lovely school has to offer you. And so as we close up tonight, you're gonna to see a couple of links be dropped in the chat. The first of those is our admissions email address. So that's gonna be ugadmissions at apu.edu. If perhaps you have some further questions right now that were not able to be answered or even later, and you would like to get a hold of somebody to answer those questions, please feel free to send an email to, once again, ugadmissions at apu.edu, and somebody will connect with you and help you get those answers that you're looking for. And uh, the other thing you'll see is we're actually going to drop a link to our virtual tour as well. It is a platform that we have been using where if you want to come check out campus and see a little bit more about what 
APU actually looks like. It is the perfect platform for you, and all you need is an internet connection. And for all of you who are here tonight, you'll be happy to hear that Wilden, which is actually where most of our business classes will be, is part of that tour. So you can even go see uh, the front of Wilden, go give our cougar a little high five outside the entrance, and go pay him your respects while you're over there. But once again, thank you everyone who was able to speak on our panel today. I know that I speak for all of us here at Emissions that it is always a pleasure being able to speak with all of you. And Dr. Pfeiffer's uh, virtual background is actually Wilden Hall. Yeah, that's, that's Wilden right. Hall, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful, well, thank you so much everyone again. It was great speaking with, with all of you and have a lovely night. Okay, you too, thanks very much you guys. Take good care. See you at APU. Hey. <laughs>